All right, this is a lecture on pharmacology covering serotonin and the ergot alkaloids, a lot of psychiatric med medications and that sort of thing. The precursor to serotonin is L-tryptophan. L-tryptophan breaks down to become 5-HT, also known as serotonin. So we're gonna talk about these HT receptors quite a bit, so every time this HT is referring to serotonin. Now, 5-HT can break down into melatonin, or 5-HIAA, and 5-IHA can actually be uh, taken, the levels of it can be detected in blood, and sometimes that'll be an indication for some kind of tumor, because some tumors break down, ser tumors break down serotonin really rapidly, and so there'll be a really high level of 5-HIAA in the blood, and then you say, well, this person may have a tumor. It is monoamine oxidase that breaks down 5-HIAA. Serotonin is something in our brains that is a neurotransmitter that is associated with feeling good and a lot of other things. We'll go into all the details right now. But essentially, when people have depression, they, there's a theory that it's that they have they don't have enough serotonin uh, in their neuro uh, their neurosynapses, and so they target this a couple ways. One way is they give the per person a an SSRI, which stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor, and what this does is essentially goes in the neurosynapse and kind of covers the. Let me explain it this way. So the neurosynapse here's the the presynaptic uh, presynaptic terminal and it's going to release these vesicles full of serotonin. Serotonin is going to go out, it's going to bind, and then it's going to be reuptaken again, it's going to release again, it's going to reuptaken again. But they think maybe with depressed people it re reuptakes too fast and so they don't have enough of it in this in this neurosynapse and so they do a, uh, a SSRI is going to cover up this presynaptic uh, terminal a little bit and make it so that more serotonin stays once it's released and less gets reuptaken. The other, the other thing they do is they get people monoamine oxidase inhibitors because it's monoamine oxidase that breaks down serotonin so you have less of it in the body. So you give someone an MAOI or a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, it's going to make it so they have less serotonin broken down so they have more serotonin in their body. More serotonin, they're not as depressed, they feel happier. So the, the SSRI that they mentioned was fluoxetine. Okay, so if you take a lot of, if, this is stupid, but if you were to give a whole bunch of uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors to an ox, it might get so happy that it would flu or fly, fluoxetine, ugh, terrible, terrible way of memorizing, oh, whatever, fluoxetine, SSRI, okay? Now, there are some agonists, which are the ergot alkaloids, and there are some antagonists. So we're going to talk about the antagonists first. So there's all these receptors, they call them 5-HT something receptors, so 5-HT standing for serotonin. So there, we'll talk about the 5-HT2 receptor antagonists. And this is typically used to treat hypertension, okay? So uh, maybe you could think 5-HT2 and hyper hypertension, hypertension, tuition, I don't know. Whatever works for you treats hypertension. So there's three of them they have listed here that, that block this. Phenobenoxamine, ben, uh, phenobenoxamine. Uh, this is an alpha antagonist, okay? There's alpha receptors, this antagonizes those receptors. There's also ciproheptidine, which we talked about in the histamine lecture. Remember, that was a first-generation H1 blocker. Apparently, this also blocks 5-HT2 receptors as well, these serotonin receptors. And then there's also clozapine. And clozapine was mentioned earlier under the tricyclic antidepressants. So there's a bunch of different antidepressants that, that were mentioned, a bunch of things. Maybe I'll really quickly go over them now just so that you've heard them before. So there are, uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm 
so actually clozapine was not a tricyclic antidepressant. It was an antipsychotic drug. Yeah, I apologize. So they say uh, anti-anxiety, you can take busiprone, mood stabilizer, you can take lithium, uh, trazodone, and mitrazapine are both antidepressants. Yeah, I apologize for that. That was not a, not a tricyclic antidepressant. That's incorrect. Okay, so next. Uh, now you have these 5-HT3 receptor antagonists. The only one he had bolded was onadestron, but they all end in estron, okay? Estron. And I kind of thought earlier, maybe you could draw this picture of this guy. He is, he is estron, he's strong. Those are muscles, those, those are threes. You remember the HT3? See those threes in there, the muscles? Here's a smile, and he's got a, there we go, so yeah, he's strong. Well, these are anti-nausea, okay? So they prevent nausea. So maybe think of the strong guy vomiting, okay? Blech. all right? So uh, now you have, you, you have some things that you typically take with onadestron to prevent nausea. You, a lot of times, will take ap aprepitant, which is an NK1, associated with NK1, has to do with pain. You can take promethazine, which we talked about earlier. Promethazine was an alpha agonist, and it's also an H1 an, uh, antagonist. Did I say agonist? Alpha, I can't remember. Anyway, you look it up. It's under the histamines. It's first generation antihistamine, and it's a uh, H1 antagonist. Next, you have dexamethasone, which is a corticosteroid, and you have lorazepam which is an A-GABA agonist. And you know, uh, just like benzo benzodiazepine. A-GABA agonists uh, open up chlorine channels, so that's how you can remember that. So these four drugs are taken with onadestron to help prevent nausea, apparently. Okay, also, the last one we have here, this is actually an agonist, okay? These other, uh, HT2 and HT3, all this stuff was antagonist. This is an agonist. And it is 5-HT-1-D-1-B agonist, okay? So th this one is sumatriptan. And for this, what I'm going to have you imagine is this big, fat sumo wrestler. Those are toes. And here's this little thingy that they wear. And he's fallen down, and he hit his head, and now he has a migraine. You know, they, they, in sumo wrestling, they try to knock each other down. This guy got knocked down, the sumo, sumo goat guy, he got knocked down, and now he has a migraine. Ow, migraine, okay, that's how you remember it. 1D, 1B, maybe you think, oh, this is gonna be weird. Okay, I'm, hit, I'm gonna put a D for his little loincloth thingy they wear, and I'm gonna put a B for his chest muscles, okay? So, 1D, 1B, 1D, 1B. Agonist, okay? And agonist, how can you remember that it's an agonist? Because he is in agony, okay? He's in agony, oh, agonist, agony, okay? Whereas these two are both antagonists. Okay, now the other thing we need to remember is that there's lysergic acid, something, that is LSD, it's a hallucinogen, it's a naturally occurring herbaloid, and it has this similar like indole ring that looks a lot like serotonin or dopamine, something like that. Anyway, remember that. Now, there are also the ergot alkaloids. So we're gonna go over these really quickly. Ergotamine, okay? Ergotamine is for treating migraines. Apparently, they give it with caffeine because it increases its effectiveness. So this, this, this goat is mean, okay? Your goat is mean, ergotamine. Why is your goat mean? Because your goat has a migraine, okay? And you can see it is an 5-HT1B agonist. So the B gets to ride on his back because it's, it's nice to that. It's ag agonistic towards that. But it's a 5-HT1D antagonist. And so the Ds are down here and the goat's stepping on it because it antagonizes the 1D, okay? There it is. B's on the back, agonist. D's are on the floor, antagonist. Helps with migraines. Your goat is me. All right, now bromocryptine. Bromocryptine, 
little story here. You got a bro, and he died, and he's in the crypt. Why did he die? He had Parkinson's. So here's the son and his car parking. So Parkinson's, your bro crypt is here. Okay, so what, what is bromocryptine? Bromocryptine is used to treat Parkinson's. Okay, so there it is right there. Parkinson's, you treat, treat Parkinson's symptoms. It's also used to treat hyperprolactemia. Okay, so if a person is producing too much uh, prolactin, it makes them secrete too much milk and uh, that's not good for guys, and it can be hard for a woman too, actually, it can prevent women from getting pregnant. I don't know, it can cause it have some effects here. But anyway, too much milk, whatever. So here's his woman, his, his, woman, his, his girlfriend, she's taking, uh, oh, by the way, all the other thing too, this is a bag of dope, because it's a doping antagonist, so he, he liked dope, okay? He had lots of dope here, D2 agonist, and it suppresses prolactin. So his girlfriend has been taking the dope, so she does not have milk producing right now. There she is. And it is also an alpha receptor antagonist. And I don't know how to memorize that exactly. Maybe he was the alpha and he died. I don't know, antagonist. And then it's also a 5-HT2 antagonist. And I thought HT2 kind of looked like two home teachers, something in there. Anyway, HT antagonist. So I'm these two guys and she's stepping on. 5-HT, okay, whatever. Next, ergonovine. Okay, ergonovine, novine, kind of sounded to me like November. In other words, you're gonna go in November. You're gonna have your baby in November. Here's a turkey, remember November. And here's the baby, because this one causes uterine contraction, okay? So you give ergonovine to a woman, her uterus is gonna start tightening down, okay? So this is a 5-HT2. Agonist, so unlike this, this is an antagonist for 5-HT2. This is the same one over here. This is an agonist, okay? So here are the two home teachers, the alphas on them, because it's also an alpha agonist, and they're gonna come help with the baby. Agonist, right, okay, we're helping out. Next, you have Ergoloid. Ergoloid, kind of sounded like Floyd, like Pink Floyd, which is this rock band. And so Pink Floyd, the singer, sings these crazy demented songs, and so it's dementia. And he's trying to get off of dopamine, so this decreases dopamine metabolism, because he's trying to decrease his eating of dope. dope. So dementia, Pink Floyd, ergoloid, dementia. I have a, like two minutes left to cover the last little bit in this time. Talk for a second about the um, some of the other effects on here. Let's see, what should I talk about? There's a lot to mention. How about, okay, the 5-HT1D1B, the way that it inhibits, going back over here, these agonists, the way that it inhibits this migraines, I guess is it inhibits trigeminal nerve excitability. It's very selective. It has 10 times the like vaso opening, I can't think of the word, of the, the blood vessels in your head as it does in your heart, which is good. But there's, you be careful giving the, these to people because they can have really bad side effects if they have any sort of, um, anything that would cause trouble, like if they had a myocardial infarction or a stroke or something in the past, anything that cuts off blood. Apparently, taking these classes of drugs can have these horrible side effects where people get peripheral um, decreasing of their blood flow in here and their, their hands get all black and they die. So anything that would cause, anything that would be associated would be bad with cutting off blood vessels anywhere in someone, you do not give these, these drugs to people. They're ergot alkaloids to people. And that's about it.